attribute data are data that describe any particular geospatial layer. And you access the attribute data by right-clicking any particular layer and saying, open the attribute table. That is one method. It will open up the descriptive non-geographic data that describes your geographic data. The other method is to click on the layer that you are interested in and then to navigate up to your icons that come standard with the installation of QGIS and simply say open attribute table and that particular attribute table will become accessible to you. Once it is opened, there's a lot of information available to you from that particular layer. You can, in your video now, on your screen, see that I have various columns, object ID, tag, feature type, geometry type, map sheet, and shape length. Now, these are my various fields that this particular layer has saved within it. Now, if you right click or and say properties or just simply double click that layer, you'll access the properties. And in, under the information tab, if you scroll down under fields, you'll see those exact same fields listed again. So two ways of accessing your attribute table configuration not the content within it, but the configuration is by accessing the properties and the information tab, scrolling down to fields, or you right click and say properties. Now what this tells you here is that, for example, the object ID field or column is saved as a real type. So that's a number. It has a maximum length of 20. The tag is saved as a string, that's a text and it has a maximum length of 50, so 50 characters, and so forth. So you can access the information of how data is actually stored within your file, in this case, the attribute table, by accessing the properties themselves. But going back to the actual attribute table, so if you open the attribute table, there's um, many things that you can do here. You can search, you can filter, you can sort from smallest to largest, and so forth. So let's say, for example, that I'd like to have the object ID sort from the largest number to the smallest number. I just click on that particular field and I can sort it from the largest number, so 154, all the way down to the smallest. I click again and it will do the opposite. So you can actually simply just do sort largest to smallest to smallest to largest by doing that. Also, what you can see here is that there are 154 individual entries within this particular feature layer. So there are 154 railway segments within my railway feature class. The feature type will give me information about what type of feature this is. I can also just click on it to see if there's multiple entries. For example, there's an abandoned feature type here. The geometry just tells me what, what it is. It's, it's a line. And then I also have a field called shape length, which gives me information on how each how long each individual segment is. A very nice feature of QGIS is that you can filter this view. So you can actually extract information based on some kind of attributes and only show that kind of information. So at the bottom left of your attribute table view, you have something called show all features and if you click on that you can actually say field filter now let's say i would like to filter all the feature types that are abandoned how do i do that i go to show all features say field filter and i know that abandoned is of the feature type click on that and I just start typing abandoned and all the options that are stored within this particular field. So here there's only two. They're either abandoned or they're standard. I can click on abandoned, say enter, and then I have only the one entry in this instance where there is an, an abandoned railway line. What's also very nice is if you click on that, and you have a look at your screen, you'll see that that yellow line that displays is actually that selected abandoned railway line. 
What you can also do is you can actually zoom to that particular feature that you have now selected. How do you do that? You go back to your main view and click on that little icon there, the magnifying glass over the yellowish square, and it will zoom you to the selected feature, which is the abandoned railway line that is stored within the railways feature class that is currently active within your projects. So what you can also do is, let's say now you're interested in all the railway segments or railway lines that are not abandoned. So everything that is not abandoned, you currently have abandoned selected. So what you can do is, you can simply say invert selection. So click on that little feature there, and it will invert the selection for you by selecting all the features that are not abandoned. So you ha you'll have to clear the filter that you had before. And here we are. All the feature types that are currently standard will now be active within your view. So the filter function is very useful in very quickly navigating to any particular feature in terms of the attribute, its descriptive characteristic that describes any particular feature in your map projects. We'll have another look at this. So for example, I'm going to open the attribute table for my towns, my town names. Let's say now I'm interested in any particular town that starts with an R. So let's see if we can find any with an R. So I want to type R, so maybe RO. And I can see here, scrolling down, I have quite a few. So we have Roy Els, Rosebank, Rondebosch. We'll select Rondebosch and Rondebosch East and Rondebosch. Now these both have Rondebosch saved within it. So it's the, the name Rondebosch appears in both. And if you highlight them, you should be able to see them on your screen. You can always zoom to them again. So here we have Rondebosch and Rondebosch East that allow you to now see those particular features. The yet meaning that they're yellow shows you that they are actually currently active or rather they are selected. So it is the attribute table itself is very useful in terms of accessing information. And one of the very nice features is that you can easily filter on the information in the attribute table to help you navigate to those features of interest in your map view. And that concludes this video.